So um, I just started the recording. So we're gonna get started. So again, um, if you guys are watching this at home again, um, please scan the QR code and sign in. Uh, I really appreciate it. Today, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I hope you're all doing well and uh, I, if I'm not mistaking, your second exam is next week. So we will, we will discuss um, the plan for the next following week, uh, the next week um, before your exam of how tutor are gonna going to be and what should we do to better prepare y'all for the exam. Okay, so, um, uh -oh. so today we are going to talk about the GI disorder. Let me switch it into a single page. Perfect. Okay, so uh, today we're going to, talk, to, going to talk about GI disorder. Um, GI disorder, GI is gastrointestinal, and this includes anything from the mouth, uh, esophagus, uh, intestine. Uh, but the main topic that we're going to focus on in the GI today is the uh, liver. Uh, so before I get started, everyone can hear me clearly and uh, we can, y'all can see the screen, correct? Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So um, like I said, we're going to focus on the liver today. So what are the function of the liver? The liver is one of the most important organs in our body. Well, to be honest, all of the organs are important, but liver just has so much function and it's just so, so important and it do so many things. One of the function of liver is carbohydrate metabolism. What is metabolism? Metabolism basically meaning absorption. So the function help us to absorb the carbohydrate, to metabolize it, to break down the carbohydrate into smaller, um, into smaller, uh, into smaller, and then uh, can convert it into the, uh, the 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 blood sugar that we able to use it to generate energy. Um, so that's one of the function of the liver. Second function of the liver is protein metabolism. And um, it, when we eat uh, protein, we eat uh, nutrients and absorb it inside our intestine. Uh, the function help us with the absorption of the protein. So uh, protein is very important for our body. Why? Uh, it is because protein help us with uh, nutrition uh, and muscle and also uh, antibodies. Antibodies are these immune cells that help us fight against um, bacteria, bacteria or viruses. Um, and um, also albumin. Albumin is a, um, a, a, a molecule in our blood vessel that hold the volume of the blood. It hold the blood, the, 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 the blood volume of the blood inside the blood vessel. Um, so that is albumin, and it's also help indicating the, the nourishment of the body. Uh, third function of the liver is fat metabolism. So um, the liver help uh, to absorb fat, and uh, uh, and fat is important to uh, for make the making of steroid hormone uh, and such. Uh, detoxification. So the function help us detox. The, it helps us to um, uh, excrete all of the uh, unnecessary stuff, waste stuff, for example, the uh, inactive drugs that we take medication uh, and uh, it become the waste of the medication that we take, the liver will detox it. Uh, ammonia, uh, it will convert it into urea and then we can excrete the urea through the urine. Um, the function also, uh, synthesize bio and bio is uh, a major uh, thing for us in order to 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 break down fat. So no no liver no bio we won't be able to break down fat and if we don't if we're not able to break down fat we're not able to absorb it. So we eat it but we don't absorb it. 
the body doesn't get any nutrition factor from it. Uh, it also metabolizes steroids. Uh, it also stores vitamins and iron. So if there's something wrong with the liver, it can affect our absorption of vitamin A, D, E, K. And also vitamin A, D, E, and K are a fat soluble vitamins. So if we don't have the bile, we can't, we're not able to absorb these vitamins as well. Um, and also iron uh, is produced from the liver. Uh, so if we are, the liver does not produce iron, uh, it will affect the hemoglobin uh, and we will be anemic. Um, hematological factors uh, store filter blood and clotting factors. So the liver also play a role in the clotting uh, system. It produces some clotting factors. So if there's issues with the liver, uh, there will be issues with bleeding. So um, you guys can see that there's so much function to the liver. So again, if we can't metabolize carbohydrate, the blood sugar will be elevated. Why? Because uh, we just eat the, 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 the carbohydrate and we won't be able to absorb it. We won't, won't be able to convert it into a uh, smaller substance so that the insulin can convert it into sh uh, something that we can store or use for energy. Then it, the carbohydrate will just be uh, it, at the form when we eat. So it will cause this elevation of the blood sugar. Uh, and then if we can't make protein, uh, we'll have higher risk for infection because proteins are antibodies. Uh, protein albumins also help with volume. So if we don't have enough circulation in blood pressure, the blood pressure will be low. Like I said, albumin is a molecule that uh, flow inside our blood vessel in order to hold and maintain the volume of the, 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 the blood that we have. So if we don't have the albumin, the, the, the liquid, the blood, won't stay in the blood vessel, it will leak out of the blood vessel. And if we don't have enough volume in our blood vessel, the blood pressure will, will drop. And then we have no protein, you can't build muscle and can be malnourished and metabolize equal absorption. All right, so what is portal veins? Portal veins um, is a vein that deliver uh, blood to the uh, liver. So the function of the portal vein is because it, the liver help us to excrete and filter the waste from the blood. So that when the portal veins bring blood to the liver, the liver able to do its job. So that's why one of the function of the portal vein is to filter the waste. Uh, it provides us with nutrients. The portal vein bring blood into the liver when the liver uh, receive the blood, it being perfused, it receiving oxygen and nutrients from the from what we eat. Uh, it's storing fuel uh, and it's produced bile to dissolve fat. So filter weights, what are the ways that in our body have? The, these are medication, alcohol, ammonia, uh, it help filter them out to make them safer. Uh, if we can't filter out, liver damage will occur or, or worsen. It provides us with nutrients, including proteins, uh, fluid and volume regulation, infection control, clotting factors. Uh, if it's not working, the patient will be at high risk for bleeding. Makes sense, right? It's storing fuels, and these fuel are vitamins, including folic acid, thiamine, and B12. So these three vitamins is essential in the red blood cells generation. So production. So if we don't have these vitamins, our, we will be anemic and we don't have enough uh, production of red blood cells. Also carbohydrate, minerals, cholesterol help with the ability to make new tissues. Why portal vein is so important is because it provides blood to the whole GI system. It provides blood to the stomach, the esophagus, the liver, and um, other parts of the GI system as well. So that's why portal vein is a, a big vein that goes straight in midline of the body. Uh, so it produces bile to dissolve fat so it can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. 
So bile is produced by the, uh, the liver. And when the liver produces the bile, the bile will be, go through the bile tract and will be stored at the gallbladder. Gallbladder symptoms usually occur after eating fatty meals because it produces too much bile. All right, next. So what are the complications of liver disease? So liver is one of the organs, the cell, liver cells uh, is one of the cells that are able to generate themselves after being damaged. Uh, however, uh, if the damage is persistent and long-term uh, or chronic, uh, it will become cirrhosis. Uh, and cirrhosis basically means long-term uh, over the years from abuse to the liver. So the liver, has been consistently damaged by a lot of alcohol, by a lot of issues uh, with the portal vein that leads to not perfusing the liver and uh, leads to cirrhosis. Uh, and when the patient is in the cirrhosis state without appropriate treatment, they can have peripheral neuropathy, basically means they don't have the nerve ending in order to feel the sensation of the peripheral. Um, and also they can have portal hypertension Portal hypertension basically means that um, it is a lot of pressure built up in the uh, in the portal vein that we just talked about, um, and when there, there's a lot of a lot of pressure, there will not be the blood will not be able to flow uh, very effectively, and no blood flow meaning no perfusion, uh, edema, uh, ascites. Uh, Ascites is basically means that there's a lot of swelling and liquid that inside the belly uh, area um, and edema is swelling. Esophageal varicy, esophageal varicy basically means that uh, in our esophagus, uh, there are tiny little veins and because of the high pressure uh, from the portal vein that causes by the cirrhosis, this tiny vein in our esophageal bursts and causes bleeding uh, on the inside the esophagus of this uh, cirrhosis patient. Hepatic encephalopathy. Hepatic encephalopathy basically means that there's so much toxin in the body because the liver is, uh, doesn't work anymore because it's in cirrhosis state. So the, the, the high amount of the toxin causes damage to the brain and causes a lot of confusion in the patient who are having liver disease uh, in the cirrhosis state. And hepatic renal sy syndrome is basically like, um, uh, it causes issue with the kidneys as well. Uh, and of course, this will make more sense as we go through the content. I was just explaining the different meaning of the complications to you guys. All right, so before we start with cirrhosis, which is chronic, we have to start with something more acute. Acute meaning happen immediately and suddenly, uh, which is hepatitis. Hepatitis is acute damage to the liver. Okay, so um, we have different type of um, hepatitis. We have A, B, C, D, and E. Um, so we have, it is very important for us to know um, how do these hepatitis get transmitted? So um, the A and uh, so before anything, we know that the A and B they have the vaccine. So please learn that hepatitis A and hepatitis B we have the vaccine for this. However, we do not have the vaccine for hepatitis C. Um, there's no vaccine or. Um, or any, there are treatment for hepatitis C, but there's no vaccine for hepatitis C. We only have the vaccine for hepatitis A and B. All right, so how do these hepatitis transmitted? So hepatitis A is transmitted through the fecal oral route. Uh, this is, it is self-limiting and will get, if poor hand washing, no drug therapy needed. Um, so, uh, like the sentence said, it is self-limiting. It will go away over time. And we, they often get um, hepatitis A because of the, um, of the poor hand washing. Uh, we go to the restroom and we don't wash our hand. Um, it transmit, hepatitis A transmitted via the, um, uh, the stool, the poop, uh, or drinking contaminated water, eating contaminated food that may have feces on it. Um, uh, and um, the most the most common thing is poor hand washing. Uh, 
that so that's how hepatitis A is transmitted. Hepatitis B is blood bodily fluid born. So um, the hepatitis B is um, transmitted via blood. So if we have a cut in our body and then there's uh, we have contaminated our body with other person blood that who, who has um, hepatitis B, we can uh, get it by that way. Or needle stick, we stick someone with a needle um, and then um, we accidentally stick ourselves with the same needle. And if that person have hepatitis B, we can get hepatitis B as well. Uh, and the precaution uh, is we have to use precaution with blood and bodily fluid. And of course, bodily fluid are semen, um, saliva. Uh, so those are bodily fluid. Uh, so unprotected sex can also lead to hepatitis B. Um, so in order to prevent this, we get the vaccine. So if already have interferons to decrease the viral load. So basically what that means is one of the treatment for hepatitis is interferon. Uh, we will discuss it later, uh, but we have the treatment for hepatitis and they are called interferon. It will decrease the viral load. All right, hepatitis C is the hepatitis that we don't have the vaccine for. And it is also caused, uh, it also transmitted via the blood borne and bodily fluid. So most common reason for it, chronic liver, it is the most common reason for chronic liver diagnosis and uh, failure. There's no vaccine, but there is drug to get rid of it if infected. Uh, they are, they are directing acting antivirals. Patient have to take for 12 weeks. Example, ribavirin. With drug monitor, h, &H will cause anema. Uh, hepatitis D is blood-borne body fluid and can only get if the patient hepatitis B prevention is getting hepatitis B. So basically means that hepatitis D is also transmitted via bloodborne and bodily fluid. Uh, however, they can only get hepatitis B if the patient is already having hepatitis B. Uh, and one of the way to prevent this is to prevent the patient to get hepatitis B. That doesn't make sense really, but um, I think you guys know what I mean. Uh, hepatitis E is uh, the same as hepatitis A is transmitted via the fecal route from contaminated water. Uh, it is acute, however, it's also self-limited, meaning it will resolve on its own. All right, so um, also uh, from my note, I have hepatitis B is transmitted uh, from mother to baby as well. All right, so we have A, B, uh, I mean, vowel comes from the bowel. So A and E, the vowel A and the vowel E come from the bowel. So A and E is transmitted via the fecal oral route and B and C is transmitted via the blood bodily fluid. All right, so these are just uh, um, a pictures, a pigmonic that you guys can look at later. It's basically have some sign symptom and some treatment and diagnosis of the hepatitis. All right, next we're going to deeper uh, the, of the hepatitis. What is the pathophysiology? So the patho of hepatitis, uh, it is an acute infection of the liver. Um, large number of hepatocyte liver enzyme are destroyed by these uh, viruses. Um, the good thing is liver enzyme can, liver cells can regenerate to normal after the reduction of infection. So if we treat it um, in time and appropriately, um, and decreases the infection uh, load, uh, the viral load, we can um, help the, the liver can generate, the cell can generate again by itself. Uh, however, if it is chronic infection and there's not a timely uh, treatment, uh, it can cause fibrosis and progress to cirrhosis, which is the worst stage of uh, liver damage. Uh, fibrosis is basically means that like, it's scarring, scarring of the liver. Um, the liver cells not able to regenerate because there's no vascularity perfusion anymore. So it is hardened. Uh, causes mostly of hepatitis is viral. It is the most common, but also hepatitis can also be caused by alcohol, medications, chemicals, autoimmune disease, 
metabolic abnormality, but viral is the most common. Um, so during acute infection, virus targets liver and destroy them, causes liver dysfunction, but eventually liver cells can regenerate. In chronic infection, virus cause chronic damage to liver cells. They keep trying to regenerate, but eventually can't keep up with, uh, which causes scarring in the liver that leads to fibrosis and decreased liver function that eventually causes cirrhosis and liver failure. All right. Um, I know today is quite heavy, but um, hang in there, you guys. So hepatitis clinical manifestation. Um, so what does it show on the outside? How do we assess these patients? So these patients with hepatitis, they will have a systemic, they will have a immune response react to the hepatitis, the infection of the liver. Uh, they will show rash, angioedema, basically means the face is very swelling. Uh, they will have arthritis, uh, fever, malaise, very tired, glomerulonephritis, um, their kidney issues, uh, vascular uh, vasculitis scarring of the vessels. So um, angioedema is one of the hallmark for uh, hepatitis. It was, we got to see the face very, very swollen. Acute phase, uh, in the acute phase, the patient will have severe sharp uh, right upper quadrant pain. Uh, in, uh, they will have nausea and vomiting. Uh, and when a patient have nausea and vomiting, they, won't, they won't, don't want to eat. So that's why it is, uh, they have anorexia. And there's, if there's no food, there's no energy. So they will lead to lethargy, uh, tired, and it's hard for them to get aroused. Um, hepatomegaly, like basically enlargement of the liver, uh, lymphadenopathy, like bigger lymph node, uh, splenomegaly, the enlargement of the spleen. Uh, and jaundice, yellowish of the um, eyeball, of the skin, um, chronic hepatitis. So the, if the patient is not being treated and if the, it stay for a long time, the infection of the liver, it can progress to cirrhosis and eventually lead to uh, reduction in red blood cells and causes anema. Uh, coagulation problem will lead to a lot of risk for bleeding. Uh, spider anginoma and palmar arrhythmia basically means that there's certain spot on the skin that will that will the, it will look like a spider web very red um, and palmar arrhythmia is like red palm um, in systemic antigen antibody reaction forms early phase of sign symptom like flu like symptoms uh, angioedema, facial swelling. So when we, as a nurse, when we see the patient is very swelling on the face area, we have to maintain their airway. We have to take into consideration is their airway being blocked by the swellingness. Uh, in acute phase uh, for nausea and vomiting, we give them anti-emetics and give them small frequent meals uh, it, in, the eight, it, in the morning because usually uh, they have less nausea and um, they have more energy when they wake up. Um, avoid super hot or cold foods, uh, drink something bubbly. Um, then we have splenomegaly. Uh, so this part, splenomegaly, uh, sp Splenomegaly. So spleen is the spleen is located right below the liver. And like I, I tell you guys earlier, the liver is where the bile is produced. Bile is used to emulsifying fat to absorb fat. Um, however, the, the liver product produces the bile, but it doesn't store the bile. The, the liver produces the bile and the bile go flow to the gallbladder the, and the spleen. Um, so that the uh, so that the the fat can be emulsified, um, and the spleen. Um, the reason why uh, the spleen get enlarged is because when the patient is in cirrhosis stage, um, they have uh, issues with high pressure of the portal veins. So when the portal vein is uh, very high pressure, it will cause this the enlargement of the spleen. And the spleen, uh, it uh, store white blood cells, red blood cells, and the platelet. So if there's an enlargement of the spleen, 
uh, the spleen will not work very effectively anymore, and it will cause poor white blood cells, uh, anema, and low platelet. Uh, spleen helps with hematological process, white blood cell production, filter weights with liver disease can cause panto, pancytopenia. Pancytopenia basically means low white blood cells, low red blood cell, low platelet. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you guys? Do you, you guys want me to repeat that? Okay, okay, good. thank you. Yes, so again, the spleen, the spleen is where white blood cells, red blood cell and platelet is stored. So if there's issues with the liver, it will lead to uh, the enlargement of the spleen and uh, result in pancytopenia. All right, John this farm bilirubin metabolism disruption and increased meta and increased bilirubin can cause itching. All right, so what is bilirubin? So bilirubin is a waste of the red blood cells when it dies. As we all know that the red blood cells, it can only live for about 120 days. So when it, uh, so when it's die and regen the, the, we have the liver will excrete the waste from the red blood cell. And when they excrete it, the red blood cell broken down, it will lead to uh, the production of bilirubin. So if the if there's issues with the um, uh, the liver, the liver doesn't function. It doesn't the, uh, excrete the waste, uh, which is the bilirubin from the dead red blood cells anymore. So we will have a increased uh, accumulation of bilirubin in our blood. And whenever there are bilirubin in our blood, it will lead to uh, yellow skin, yellow eyes, and jaundice. So that's what it basically means. Uh, so, yeah, liver malfunction also cause dark urine because it can't get rid of proteins properly. Light or clay colored stool because it can't pour bile into poop to excrete it out. All right. Um, so again, we don't have the bile because the uh, the liver is having issues, so it doesn't produce bile. And if there's no bile, the poop will be clay-colored stool. Uh, with chronic anemic, because liver doesn't have the vitamins and the mineral to produce proper red blood cells. Um, like I said, because it doesn't produce bile, it doesn't help with the fat emulsification. So we can't absorb the fat and the fat include those fat soluble vitamins, vitamin um, uh, A, E, D, K. Uh, so those are fat sol soluble vitamin and those help and uh, uh, those they, and iron and those help with the production of the red blood cells. So the patient will be anemic. And also coagulation problems uh, causes increased platelet uh, promptin time, uh, bloody tarry stool, vomiting blood, uh, spider angioma and palmar arrhythmia from estrogen hormone imbalance. All right, next we have hepatitis diagnostic study. So how do we diagnose uh, hepatitis? Uh, there will be a specific antigen body for each type of viral hepatitis is depending on the antigen present will determine which type of hepatitis they have. So basically we test their blood and see uh, what specific antigen they have to determine hepatitis A, B, C, or D. Uh, liver function tests, we can do liver function tests to look at their lab, uh, the level of ALT, AST, and level of bilirubin. The higher the level of bilirubin, the worse the case is. Uh, viral genotype testing include HPV, HCV, and also liver biopsy. Liver biopsy is uh, the most, is the best one to diagnose cirrhosis. All right, LFT will be all be increased due to self-death and destruction. If liver starts getting better, this will decrease. Liver biopsy is done to see what is actually happening to the liver see how much damage there is. After biopsy, have the patient lie on their right side to compress the area. Um, yeah, so because the liver is um, uh, on the 
uh, right upper quadrant. So when they have the biopsy of the liver in order to figure out the patient is having cirrhosis or not, they will be at risk for bleeding after the procedure. So one of the way to prevent the bleeding or decrease the risk of bleeding after the biopsy is we lie on the side uh, where the procedure was um, uh, done in order to compress the area, having more pressure on it to prevent uh, blood bleeding. All right, hepatitis care, adequate nutrition, well-balanced diet, vitamin supplement, of course, because they can't absorb those so, uh, fat-soluble vitamins, so they need vitamin supplements. Um, rest, avoid alcohol and drug uh, that, are, that is detoxified by the liver. What are the drugs that is de detoxified by the liver? Acetaminophen, uh, Tylenol. Uh, acetaminophen is a liver toxicity, and we need to avoid it. Drug therapy include interferon. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, interferon in message one, uh, we came across this medication, interferon uh, alpha and, and interferon beta. So um, it is used, also used to treat hepatitis. So for interferon, just to brush up um, for you guys, uh, interferon uh, can have a risk for depression and suicidal ideation. So um, if the patient exhibit um, depression of any of those symptoms, uh, please take the patient off the drug. It is the only reason why we take the patient off the drug is because we have the patient have suicidal agitation. Um, and interferon alpha, uh, flu-like symptom is normal, okay? Nutrition, no special diet, just need higher calories, vitamin B complex and potassium. If losing tons of weight, give IV glucose or enteral nutrition. Vitamin supplement include B12, folic acid, thiamine, because remember the liver can't make these anymore. And they need to rest, and they need to rest to decrease the protein breakdown. Avoid giving acetaminophen because it's hep hepatotoxicity. Interferon, depression, suicidal ideation are major side effects. If they have this, hold and stop the medication. Okay. All right, next we have a complication uh, and prevention. So complication of hepatitis, they can lead to ascites, which is the accumulation of the excess fluid in the peritoneal cavity. So like I mentioned to you guys earlier, the liver, um, one of the function of the liver is to produce uh, protein and albumin is protein. And when there's a damage to the liver, um, the albumin will be, the albumin production will be decreased. And if there's no albumin in the blood vessel, the blood volume, the red blood cell, the platelet, all of the blood in there will leak out, the fluid will leak out of the blood vessel and uh, accumulate into the, uh, the peritoneal area and causes swelling, causes ascites, edema in the belly area. Um, and it possibly can lead to portal hypertension. Uh, the reason, uh, what is portal hypertension? Like I mentioned earlier, portal, the portal vein is the vein that delivers blood to the, uh, the whole GI tract, including the liver. However, when the liver is damaged, the cell is dead. Uh, the blood cannot get into the cell and being backed up to the portal vein causes high uh, high blood, high pressure in that area. So when there's high pressure in that area, it leads to portal hypertension, and uh, it can lead to bulging and weak, the weaken the vessel. Um, hepatitis encephalopathy. Uh, earlier, I also mentioned this. Uh, encephalopathy hepatitis is caused by the uh, the high amount of toxin in the body that leads to issue with the brain and causes confusion, uh, and it the result from the liver inability to remove the toxins. How to prevent hepatitis? We get vaccinated and avoid contact with bodily fluid. Um, yes, in certain case, yes. So uh, ascites due to reduce protein levels in the blood, causing fluid shifting to occur, uh, which reduce the plasma oncotic pressure. 
Um, so basically, it's just the the albumin is no longer in the blood vessel, it leak out into the uh, the, the the fluid leak out into the peritoneal area. All right. Um, I have 4.36. Uh, let's take five minute break before we start cirrhosis because today content is quite heavy. So let's take some frequent break and uh, we come back and then uh, we get this material. Does that sound good? So far, everything good so far? You guys following and is there any questions? Yes, did a break. <laughs> I know it's really heavy today, but we got this, you guys. Uh, it will make sense, okay? All right, let's be back at um, 4.42, okay? Let's take five. I pause the recording. Okay, everyone, um, I have 4.42, so um, let's start again so that we can uh, finish uh, this chapter together. All right, I hope everyone is back. So here we go. So cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is the worst stage of the liver disease. So healthy liver, acute infection, hepatitis, then cirrhosis. Um, in cirrhosis, basically the liver degenerates and liver cells has been destroyed. Uh, it leads to fibrosis formation. So what are fibrosis? It's basically like these scar tissues on the liver um, that, have, that was formed due to the damage. Um, and these fibrosis will lead to a lot of issues with perfusion and uh, malfunction of the liver. Common cause of cirrhosis include hepatitis C, B, alcohol abuse, drug toxins, gallbladder disease, cardiovascular disease. Risk factor being a male, alcohol consumption, fatty liver disease, excess iron deposit of the liver, hemochromatosis, basically a production of a lot of uh, red blood cells. Extreme dieting, uh, malabsorption, obesity, genetics, metabolic syndrome. Cirrhosis is end-stage liver disease, extensive destruction in liver caused liver to become fibrosis, scar tissues liver. Fibrosis form nodules, nodules squish liver ducts that decrease circulation and nutrients to the liver and eventually causes liver atrophies, liver malfunctions, okay? All right, so clinical manifestation, let's focus on this part first. Um, the, at first, the patient will have quite very few symptoms in the early stage of the disease. Uh, they will have just fatigue and um, uh, maybe enlargement of the habitat of the, um, of the liver cells. Uh, those are early symptoms. Uh, and however, when they progress to a later stage, uh, they will have uh, liver failure uh, as a result of the portal hypertension, high pressure in the portal vein. Uh, this leads to jaundice, peripheral edema, and ascites, liquid in the belly. Others include skin lesion, hematological disorder, like you remember how the liver play, effect, uh, play a role in the clotting factors, so the patient at risk for bleeding, endoc uh, endocrine disturbances, peripheral neuropathies, and spider angiomas. The reason why I highlighted is because this is one of the hallmark of the liver damage. So whenever we have liver damage, uh, spider angiomas is often uh, come up on the skin. It's like the spider red web on the patient's skin that we can see. All right, early is few signs symptoms because the liver still has some function. Uh, fatigue and hepatomegaly because the liver is working overtime and trying to stay normal. Makes sense. Late in liver failure, you get jaundice because remember the liver help excrete bilirubin. So if the liver isn't working, it can't do this anymore. So with jaundice come the itching, skin lesion, and yellowing of the eye and the skin. 
uh, portal hypertension causes peripheral edema, peripheral neuropathy, and ascites because of the fluid can flow into the liver because its vessels are being messed up from the fibrosis. So portal vein deliver blood to the liver. To the liver, however, the liver is packed with the scarring fibrosis cells. The blood cannot get into the the liver. It have it back up into the portal vein, and that will lead to a lot of issues such as ascites and peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy from decreased folic acid and vitamin B. Hematological disorder include thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, anemia from splenomegaly, and damaged liver. So whenever the liver is damaged, it causes backflow of the blood into the portal vein, and it leads to enlargement of the um, neighbor organs, which including the spleen. And the spleen, when it's get enlarged, uh, because the function of the spleen is to store white blood cell, red blood cells, and platelet, when it gets enlarged, it doesn't function very effectively anymore. So it will lead to thrombocytopenia, low platelet, leukopenia, low white blood cells, anemia, low red blood cells, and uh, all of them three is also known as pancytopenia. Uh, and uh, the spleen is bigger now, so it removes more blood from cells from circulation. And varies can cause bleeding that decrease this number. So what does varies mean? So um, because of the high pressure in the portal veins, um, inside the portal vein, there's smaller veins called varices. Uh, and because of the high pressure, it caused these smaller veins to burst. And when this smaller vein burst, it, ble it bleeding, it causes bleeding. Uh, so that's why it decreases the number of the red blood cells. And play in the fact that the liver can't even make clotting factor, uh, it even worsen the bleeding issues. So think of all of the size and bleeding disorder, including prusing, epitasis, ETC. Oops. Endocrine disorder, normal liver metabolic. So endocrine disorder include, um, like normally the liver metabolize estrogen and aldosterone. So if the liver is damaged, it can't metabolize these two hormone anymore. And um, when these two hormone is not being metabolized, uh, it increases, it accumulate inside our body. It's not being getting uh, excreted out. So if they, a patient is a male patient, they will get gynecomastia, meaning uh, big boobs, like bigger chest, bigger, more, more fatty tissues in their boobs. Yeah. And hair loss. Uh, women will get either amenorrhea, meaning no menstrual cycle or vaginal bleeding. All right. Aldosterone results in increased sodium which causes water retention and decrease potassium. So because the liver doesn't metabolize excreting the aldosterone anymore, the, high, the higher the number of the aldosterone, the higher the number of the sodium and water follows sodium. So if we retain sodium, we retain water, we, we become even more swelling, having edema all of the body and um, the, our potassium level will be out of range, uh, decreasing. Increase in estrogen also causes spider and genomas and palmar arrhythmia. Uh, palmar arrhythmia is the redness inside the palm, very red. All right. Next, we have diagnostic study of cirrhosis. Uh, again, anything wrong with the liver, we do the liver function test, and these uh, are the AST and ALT level. Uh, we also check the total protein and albumin levels. Uh, we check the cholesterol level, uh, prothrom prothrombin level, the clotting factors, and we do liver biopsy to see if the patient having uh, cirrhosis or not. LFT help evaluate if the patient is getting better or worse. If it bad, the number will be increased. So higher number of AST and ALT 
the worst the cirrhosis stage is. Um, this is the normal range. Um, I didn't. I don't think we really need to know that. She will not ask us uh, the normal range in the exam. Uh, total protein albumin levels tell us if we are making proteins healthier, higher albumin level. Low number means that they, these are not in the vessel and patient may still have edema problems. Clotting numbers will be increased if bad. So PT level will be increased if the liver is bad. So the higher the BT number, the longer the blood take to clot. Liver biopsy to see the extent of damage and possible causes. Remember what to do after biopsy. Lie on the right side because where's the liver? Right upper quadrant. All right. Nursing care of cirrhosis. So we tell the patient to rest. Why? The more they rest, the less energy they use, the less protein they use. We give them uh, B complex vitamins and potassium vitamins. I mean, not potassium, B complex and vitamin K. Uh, we avoid alcohol, we minimize, minimize or avoid aspirin, uh, bleeding risk, acetaminophen, uh, because it causes liver toxicity. Um, and we uh, avoid NSAIDs because it increases the bleeding risk. Lactulose. So why do we give them lactulose? So lactulose is a, is a laxative that it helps to excrete the ammonia level out of our body. So remember the liver help with the excretion of the ammonia. It converts the ammonia into the urea so that we can pee the urea out. Without the conversion of the liver without the conversion of the ammonia to the urea by the liver, we cannot pee the urea out. So the ammonia level, it, the higher the ammonia level, uh, the higher the toxin level inside our body. And lactulo medication is a laxative that help us, that help the ammonia buy into the store of our body and we can poop it out. So that's why we give them lactulose. And this medication is important for another complication that we are going to talk about later. Diet, we, they need to get high calories because they are in such worse stage. So they need high calorie in order to, for the body to rejuvenate. Uh, high carbohydrate because they need the energy. A low, low fat because the liver is uh, not working. So we can't not give them fat because they can't absorb it. Low sodium because they are so swelling already um, and ascites, uh, so we prevent the fluid retention. Uh, in the worst, everything have done, but nothing worked. We do the liver transplant. Rest, decrease the breakdown protein in the body so the liver doesn't have to work as hard. Lactulose for ammonia removal, no side effect and what to teach the patient. So we will talk about it in a bit. Uh, vitamin K for clotting. All right, cirrhosis complication. So these are the complication of cirrhosis. Portal hypertension. I think we talk about that quite a bit. Uh, basically, high blood, high pressure in the portal vein. Esophageal varices. So earlier I mentioned varices. What is varices? Bursting of the little vessel inside a portal vein, and um, esophageal is this part is the, is the, is where, is the esophageal, is the esophagus, yeah, I don't know how to explain that, um, so esophageal varicity basically means that, uh, the high pressure from the portal vein leads to the burst of the smaller vessel in our esophagus, leading to excessive bleeding, uh, in the patient esophagus, uh, and ascites, fluid inside the belly, hepatic encephalopathy, uh, is the uh, high amount of toxin in the body lead to confusion in the brain. All right, portal hypertension causes the most issue. So portal hypertension is what generate all of the issues that the patient have with liver disease because it's connected to so many organs. Um, it in, so basically increased vena pressure in the portal circulation Pressure begins to back up into the spleen, causing splenomegaly, leads to enlarged collateral veins, 
get super big, causing more holes and leak. Fluid leaks into the peritoneum, causing ascites, increased pressure working its way up in the body, causing esophageal varice. Over time, systemic hypertension will occur. So what do we take from this? We take that liver damage leads to high pressure in the portal vein, leads to splenomegaly, leads to ascites and esophageal varices. That's it. Um, treatment, we give them beta blocker, transjugular, intrahepatic, poor something sun, but it, it also know at the TIPS procedure. So the, those are the treatment, blood, uh, beta blocker, tips and tip profi, uh, procedure. There is an increased pressure in the liver circulation because remember it is mostly scar tissues, fibrosis. So vessels are having a hard time pumping into the liver. So the backup of the circulation goes to the spleen and the spleen gets bigger. Collateral veins are weaker and will and were just created to help decrease the pressure in the hepatic circulation. So the weak collateral veins leak out albumin into surrounding areas, which causes ascites and also bleeding varices happen because these new collateral veins can't take a lot of pressure in the body. Beta blocker, it helps to reduce the portal pressure and TIPS procedure is a stand that is placed from the hepatic vein to the portal vein to help increase perfusion. Create another pathway for blood flow, which will lower the pressure. All right. So basically it is a stent that um, we place it uh, from the hepatic vein to the portal vein. It's, uh, it's kind of like another, another vein. They added one more vein so that it lowered the pressure. So it creates another pathway of blood to flow. All right, next we have esophageal and gastric varices. So this is the most life-threatening complication of cirrhosis. It can cause death uh, very quickly. Um, and it happens because of the high pressure of the portal vein, portal hypertension. How do we care for this patient? Um, we prevent bleeding hemorrhage by using beta blocker to reduce the high pressure. If bleeding occurs, we need to stabilize the patient. We need to manage the airway, provide IV therapy and blood product. Um, we can use uh, procedures such as band ligation, sclerotherapy by, we burnt, we use like a, uh, a, 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 a tube that can categorize, uh, categorize like uh, burn it so that it, it, it doesn't bleed anymore. Uh, balloon taponate, put pressure on the bleed to help and stop it. So the bleeding is right here at the esophagus. So it have very high chances of the patient being drowned on their own blood. So we have to stop the blood as soon as we can. Um, one of the big medication that we need to know in order to uh, stop the blood for this patient that um, I think Professor Lanasa would definitely mention in class is the, um, please give me one second, is the Sandotox, Sandostatin, Sandostatin. Uh, Sandostatin is the medication that uh, helps with active GI bleeding. It helps constricting the blood vessels. So this is the medication that she mentioned in class for her last semester that I have it in my note. And uh, it is uh, the medication, this medication will be used for the patient when they experience signs symptom of esophageal varices. So please study this medication. And um, she will mention in class tomorrow, I think. Um, so the body needs a way to reduce the increased pressure in all these vessels. So it creates a new vessel, collateral veins. 
but these new vessels are weak and fragile, so that causes easily bleeding when there's an increase in pressure in the body, result in bleeding varices. So how to pre prevent the bleeding? We avoid alcohol, aspirin, and cess because they have high risk for bleeding. Uh, we use beta blocker to reduce the pressure. And then if the patient is bleeding, we first we give them a bolus of fluid because um, when bleeding fluid first, fluid fast, trying to normalize from loss of volume. Second, uh, IV octreal tie vasopressor. So uh, octreal tie is sandotoxin, san sa uh, sandostatin. Uh, sandostatin is the generic name of the um, octreal tie. Octreal tie. Sandostatin. Okay. All right. And third, we give them blood and vitamin K to help with the clotting. So to prevent re-bleeding or bleeding use, we use ligation bedding. It's like a rubber band placed around the base of the varices, so blood flow won't go there anymore. Balloon tamponade control the hemorrhage by compressing the varices. All right, assessment. The blood pressure will drop because uh, hypovolemic shock. Uh, we look at the H and H and it will be decreased. Uh, patient will be tachycardia, tachypnic, high heart rate, um, high respiratory rate, shortness of breath, pale fatigue, uh, melena, uh, and um, hematemesis, uh, vomiting blood. Uh, supportive measure, we can give them a fresh frozen plasma, packed red plus cells, vitamin K, proton, proton pump inhibitors, beta blocker, repeated band ligation. Uh, so these uh, FFP and PRPC will replace blood loss, help make blood clot. Uh, vitamin K clotting factors and PPI will decrease the acid, help prevent erosion of the varices. So proton pump inhibitor will help uh, coat and decrease the acid, which will uh, worsen the, the varices, the, these collateral veins, these smaller veins in our portal vein. All right, ascites. Ascites is due to poor protein and water leakage into the peritoneum. Um, so uh, water follows albumin. So the albumin uh, is not inside the blood vessel anymore. So that's why the water leaked out. It doesn't stay in the blood vessel. That's why the water leaked out and uh, stay in the peritoneum area. They will cause abdominal striae, so these like purple striae or the stretch mark on the on the on the belly because of the increase in size. Um, they will have sign of dehydration, even though they are they are they even though they look like they're very swelling, but they are dehydrated because uh, the 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 fluid is in the wrong place. Uh, they have low blood pressure because there's no volume inside of the blood vessel. They'll have tachycardia, uh, sunken eyes, poor skin turgor, and decreased urinary output. Hypokalemia because fluid is shifting out of the cell. At risk for peritonitis because fluid is just sitting in the belly and shortness of breath. Treatment sodium restriction to prevent fluid retention, albumin infusion, um, potassium sparing diuretic, um, fluid removal, paracentesis. Um, so it's important we use potassium sparing because patient in cirrhosis, they already have issues with the low potassium level due to the increase of the aldosterone hormone. When aldosterone hormone increase, it's increased sodium. Increased sodium leads to increased fluid inside the body. Increased fluid inside the body increase, uh, decreases the uh, potassium. So that's why we need to uh, use potassium sparing diuretic to spare the potassium left in our body. Um, ascites due to portal hypertension, decreased abdomen in intravascular space and hyperaldosteronism, increased sodium and ADH. Common size of cirrhosis. So belly is very swollen, abdominal striae, distension with weight gain. 
Signs symptom of dehydration because the fluid is outside of the vessel and not being used up. Hypokalemia because of the high aldosterone level. Peritonitis, no sign symptom. Um, peritonitis is like the, uh, the, the issues of the, the, the bowel where they uh, have like a hole and uh, they inflame, I think. Um, we need to brush up on that. I need to, I don't really remember what it is. Shortness of breath uh, because fluid doesn't let diaphragm expand fully, place in high flowers. So we have to sit them up. Paracentesis. Paracentesis is the process of fluid removal when the patient having a lot of acidity, a lot of fluid inside the outside in the peritoneal area. So we make sure the patient voids immediately before bladder distension can cause them to puncture the bladder. So paracentesis is an important procedure that we need to know for this second exam. Um, please make sure that the patient voids before uh, the procedure. All right, we need to put them in a high flower position and we monitor for hypokalemia and electrolyte imbalance. Monitor for blood pressure and heart, and heart rate. Uh, we assess for hypovolemia size, which uh, can indicate by low blood pressure and high heart rate. Uh, monitor for dressing for bleeding and leakage. All right, hepatic encephalopathy. So this is due to the high ammonia level because the liver doesn't function. It doesn't convert the ammonia to the urea. So we have high ammonia level. Um, the hallmark of hepatic encephalopathy is asterisk. So asterisk uh, is the tremor in the hands when the wrist is extended. So the patient will be flapping like this. They extend the hand and they will be flapping. Uh, Feeder hepaticus is the musty breath like ammonia, like it's fruity, it smells like ammonia. Like when we pee, we smell the ammonia. It's like that. Uh, it smells like pee in the mouth, basically. They will be very competitive, like just wanting to fight because they are so confused because of the high ammonia level in the body. Uh, it can be aggravated by constipation because Anoma is just sitting there getting absorbed into the bloodstream. So treatment, lactulose will reduce ammonia level. Lactulose, the laxative that I mentioned earlier, low protein, uh, protein produce ano uh, um, um, ammonia. So when the body breaks down the proteins, it, the byproduct is ammonia. So we give them a low protein diet. We prevent constipation, give them fiber, drink fluid, uh, tips procedure, the procedure where they add a knot of the, the, the vessel to reduce this, the pressure of the vein, the portal vein, and finally liver transplant if nothing works. A neuropsychiatric problem, um, ammonia causes neurotoxic effect. Liver can't break down ammonia to be excreted out equal high level. Constipation causes increase in ammonia as well because ammonia is sitting in the GI floor. If the patient is constipated, the more ammonia the patient is built up. Lactulose suck ammonia back into the stool. It speed up the GI tract because it is a laxative. So the body does not have time to absorb the ammonia. So we don't want them to absorb, absorb ammonia in the bloodstream. So make sure the patient, so make sure to look at the ammonia level uh, to evaluate whether the medication is working or not. And yes, it is a laxative, so the patient will poops a lot. All right, hepatorenal syndrome. So basically, portal hypertension leads to vasodilation, the uh, increase of the diameter of the blood vessels. It leads to decreased arterial blood volume and uh, leads to renal vasoconstriction, renal failure. Um, because the portal uh, vein, it's also deliver blood to the kidney as well. So if there's an issues with the pressure of the portal vein uh, or damage to the portal vein, it will not bring sufficient blood or perfusing the kidney. So that's why it will lead to renal uh, failure. Uh, with azotemia, 
azotema is high nitrogen, uh, high ammonia level. Uh, so it, the pay, when the kidneys fail, we don't produce urine. So all the urea and um, we retain uh, fluid inside our body. That's why it causes ascites. All right. Okay. All right. So before we move on to the pancreas, which is the, uh, the next one, do you guys want to take another break? <laughs> Yes. Okay. So uh, let's come back here at 516. Okay. Uh, we have about um, 15, 15 more slices to go. All right. 516. We come back. Go over pancreas function. So uh, what does the pancreas do? The pancreas help us digest food and it uh, has some endocrine function, including beta cells uh, with help with the insulin, uh, alpha cells will help with the production of glucagon, delta cells, somatins, uh, somatostatin, F cells, pancreatic polypeptides. So uh, just remember beta and alpha, insulin and glucagon. Um, insulin help with reduction of the um, the blood sugar and cluagon, it increases the blood sugar. All right, Pancreat pancreatitis includes inflammation of the pancreas. Uh, it basically means that it is an inflammation of the pancreas. The primary cause for this is the Billy tract uh, issues. It diagnosed Billy, Billy tract and uh, alcohol um, may cause bad insulin production, so may have a high blood sugars. So um, in my note, I have the, the, the primary cause of pancreatitis is alcohol. Um, clinical manifestation is left upper quadrant mid epigastric pain, worse after eating, sudden deep vomiting, sudden deep and the patient tries to vomit and doesn't help. Echimosis, sign symptom of hypocalcemia. Treatment include NPO, NG suction, uh, pain, evaluate if it is getting better, give pain medication, evaluate amylase and lipase to see if they are improving because the pancreas secreting um, um, amylase and lipase enzymes. So we look at the lab uh, to see uh, if they are decreasing, it means that they are improving. Uh, fluid and electrolyte balance. Uh, we rest the bowel we, uh, having an MPO diet. Um, so when we don't give them food, the pancreas doesn't have to uh, produce the enzyme to digest the food. So uh, it doesn't have to work. So... MPO, no food, no work for pancreas so that we can reduce the inflammation. Inflammation due to pancreatic enzymes spill out into the pancreatic ish tissue, result in auto digestion and severe pain. So um, basically what it means is that in the patient who have pancreatitis, they have the excessive production of the pancreatic enzyme. And this pancreatic enzyme is often used to digest the food. However, uh, uh, this pancreatic enzyme, uh, it's instead is hurting the 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 the, the pancreas itself. It's an autoimmune disease that causes severe pain in the patient. Uh, ecchymosis due to trypsin in the circulation will see bluish flank, like bluish in the flank area, and uh, perium um, umbilical area. Also hypocalcemia it, uh, because of the combining of the calcium and fatty acid during fat necrosis of the pancreas. Sign symptom of hypocalcemia include soft stick sign and trouser type sign. Um, uh, you guys need to look up what are those signs on Google. It's like this, the sign. Um, when we put the blood pressure cuff on, um, MPO and NG suction to reduce enzyme from being released, level decrease because not giving the patient food that will cause the level to go down because the pancreas is not sending the enzymes out. 
fluid and electrolyte due to suction and dehydration. Um, all right, next we have bowel obstruction. Uh, it basically means that everything backs up. Um, eat food uh, causes a lot of pain, start to back up, start to vomiting. Uh, intervention include NG tube. Uh, we can use the NG tube to decompress, decrease the pressure and pain, and pull out the back up uh, from the, uh, basically it means bowel obstruction is the, the bowel, it have an obstruction, the food cannot go through, uh, we cannot excrete the food out. So everything will be back up so that we use the a, a NG tube to suction all of these like nasty stuff out because it's back up, it's sitting there. Um, always on low intermittent suctioning, uh, we observe color, amount and odor, uh, hydration for the patient. And um, if nauseous, we check to see if suction is on. Always check the placement. Um, the food can't pass through the obstruction. The patient can't, can't poop. Uh, distension and pain lead to paralytic ileus. Um, they may start going to the bathroom, but it is probably just seepage from the water coming from a tiny hole. NG tube, when giving meds, we turn off the suction for 30 minutes. NG tube, watch for metabolic alkalosis because you are, you're taking out all of the stomach acid, right? This is important to know. Metabolic alkalosis because we take out of the stomach acid when we suction. Fluid, normal saline with potassium chloride because we are pulling out potassium. Patient should not be nauseous. If the patient is nauseous, we have to check if the suction is on uh, in order to suction, continuously suction the patient. Uh, blood, uh, we check right lower quadrant, right upper quadrant, right left lower quadrant and left left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, check for improvement or getting worse. Um, I think we do that for the pain. All right, same symptom of small bowel obstruction include rapid onset, crampy, clockly pain, greatly increased abdominal distension, projectile vomiting, uh, which contains bile, emesis, fecal order. Uh, they can literally like vomiting emesis that have poop inside the, the, the vomiting stuff. Um, they have absent BS. I'm not sure what that is. I would, uh, I'll check with it later and I'll, I'll put it on the uh, Facebook group, okay? Uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalance. Oh yeah, absent bowel sounds, correct. Thank you so much for helping me out. Um, Yes, absent bowel sound, the patient uh, will, not, will not have the bowel sound because of the uh, obstruction. So uh, there's no um, parast parastosis uh, contraction of the bowel. There's no movement of the food throughout the bowel. So that's why there's no bowel sound. Thank you. Uh, sign symptom of large bowel obstruction include gradual onset, constipation, clockly pain, they're rarely vomiting because the large bowel is quite far away from the, uh, from the esophagus and they'll have tinkling bowel sound. All right. Okay, we make it, guys. Um, it's been a long and heavy lectures. So um, it's up to you guys if you got to do the questions. If not, uh, I can post the uh, PowerPoint and you guys can do the question later on uh, your end. But... Uh, um, I need uh, everyone approval. So what do you guys think? Do you guys want to do the question right now or uh, you guys want to, to end the session for today? We can do the questions. Okay, so if no one uh, disagree, we're gonna go ahead and do the questions. All right. Okay, so the first questions, the nurse who is caring for a client, 
with a diagnosis of cirrhosis is monitoring the client for sign of portal hypertension, which finding should, should the nurse interpret as a sign or symptom of portal hypertension? All right. The question is asking for a sign symptom of portal hypertension. I have one B, awesome, I have two Bs. All right, all right, let's see what the answer is. Oops, correct guys. So the, the answer is abdominal distension. Uh, rationale is with the portal hypertension, the protein shift from the blood vessel via the larger pores of the capillaries into the lymph space. When the lymphatic system is unable to carry off the excess protein and water, they leak through the liver capsule and into the peritoneal cavity. This is called ascites. And abdominal distension would be the consequence. Increased portal pressure can lead to fighting associated with right-sided heart failure, such as distended jugular vein, Thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, and anemia are caused by splenomegaly that result from backup of blood from the portal vein into the spleen. All right, next we have a client admitted to the hospital with a suspected diagnosis of acute pancreatitis is being assessed by the nurse, which assessment finding would be consistent with acute pancreatitis. I know we didn't go over pancreatitis much, so just do you guys do your best. I probably can't even do these questions. So, yeah. Okay, so I have two, three, and five for pancreatitis. All right, let's see if it's correct. Yes, so I have four, five, six. Awesome, Juan. Um, so um, gray and blue color, the flank, or uh, earlier I, I mentioned that in the slide, they will have the bluish, um, um, bluish color in their flank, abdominal guarding and tenderness because they are in so much pain, uh, left quadrant pain with radiation to the back. Um, so gray is blue, this color at the flank is known at gray turner side and is occur as a result of pancreatic enzyme leakage to the cutaneous tissue from the peritoneal cavity. The client may demonstrate abdominal guarding and may complain of tenderness and palpitation. The pain associated with acute pancreatitis uh, is often sudden and in onset and is located in the epigastric region or left upper quadrant with radian to the back. The other absent are incorrect. So let's see why one, two, three is not. Number one, diarrhea is not because the patient, we usually patient with um, pancreatitis, they are MPO and um, when they eat the food, it's in so much pain, so they don't eat the food anymore. So there's no food content in order to produce stool. So if there's no stool, there's no diarrhea. And again, black terry stool, um, there's no stool. Mostly there's no, there's no bleeding issues that uh, related to the pancreatitis. Uh, so that's why uh, we don't have the black terry stool. And hyperactive sounds, again, because there's no when we think about pancreatitis, we think about uh, we, we don't have the food, we don't eat. So that's why um, there's no content in the bowel. So, so it can't be hyperactive bowel sound. Okay. Um, next, we have the primary health care provider has determined that the client has contracted hepatitis A based on flu-like symptom and jaundice. Which statement made by the client support this medical diagnosis? All right, remember what is hepatitis A transmitted through? All right, so I ate selfish about two weeks ago at a local uh, restaurant. Uh, let's see if it's correct. 
perfect. Good job, you guys. So we have number two, because hepatitis A is transmitted via fecal oral route. Um, it can be uh, contaminated water, contaminated food, or improperly cooked shellfish, or infected food handlers. B, C, D are transmitted most commonly via infected blood or body fluid, such as in the cases of intravenous drug abuse, history of blood transfusion, or unprotected sex with multiple partners. Next, the nurse is reviewing the record of a client with a diagnosis of cirrhosis and notes that there is documentation of the presence of asterixis. How would the nurse assess for its presence? All right, I have one answer already. Awesome, so I have uh, two threes. So ask the client to extend the arms. So let's see if it's correct. It's correct. So asterixis is irregular flapping movement of the fingers and wrist when the hands and arm are outstretched. With the palms down, the wrist bent up and the fingers spread. So asterisks is the most common and reliable sign that hepatic encephalopathy is developing. So um, perfect, good job you guys. Next we have the nurse is caring for a client with acute pancreatitis and is monitoring the client for periolytic ileus. Which piece of assessment data should alert the nurse to this occurrence? So what is paralytic ileus? It's basically there's no movement or there's no peristalsis contraction happening. There's no contraction of the bowel, no movement of the stool. So what would we assess? Okay, I have um, one answer for number one. Let me get one more and then I can move on, you guys. All right, I have another D, a uh, firm non-tender mass palpable at the lower right costal margin. All right, let's see what which one is correct. All right, the correct answer is an ability to pass flatus. So an inflammatory reaction such as acute pancreatitis can cause paralytic ileus. So pancreatitis can cause um, no contraction, no movement of the bowel. The most common form of non-medical obstruction is the inability to flat pass flatus. It is a clinical manifestation of paralytic ileus. So loss of sphincter control is not a sign of pancreatic ileus. And pain is associated with pancreatic ileus, but the pain is usually manifested as more constant generalized discomfort. Um, all right, option four is the description of physical fighting of the liver enlargement, okay? The liver may be enlarged in case of cirrhosis or hepatitis. And although this client may have an enlarged liver, the enlarged liver is not a sign of paralytic ileus or intestinal obstruction. So inability to pass flatus, unable to fart, is, um, is the sign of pancreatitis, I mean paralytic ileus. Okay, guys, so um, next week we will have uh, the exam review for you guys uh, for the second exam. Um, thank you so much for uh, hanging in here today. I know it was very heavy. Um, get some rest, eat something good, and do some jumping jack, I think it will help. Um, is there any other questions that uh, I can help you guys uh, before I end the session today? Feel free to ask me anything, okay? All right. Is it possible to do the review during the weekends? Uh, so I, unfortunately, I work during the weekends, um, but I will, I will try to get back to y'all. Um, um, probably I'll make like a study guide before the review so that uh, post this so you guys can can look at it before the the exam but um nothing is set in stone yet i will figure it out and i'll i'll tell you guys um before the end of this week 
okay? And uh, yes, thank you, you guys. Thank you for coming. All right, if you guys have not scanned the QR code, please scan the QR code. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to stop.